Hi, I'm Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics. Just look at this beautiful pineapple quilt behind me. Never made one of these before, and I've absolutely had a blast using the Creative Grids Pineapple Trim Tool. And this is such a fun and cool ruler. It comes with an instruction booklet. Of course, there are step-by-step -step instructions. Sometimes I tend to get a little bit lost and sometimes in instructions. So I wanted to show you in person just how easy it is, how fun it is, and it makes a stunning quilt. This is uh, made of black fabric and the Cape Facet uh, fabrics, which are just spectacular. They have so much character, um, and I can't wait to jump into this and just show you how easy it is. So you'll need a couple tools, of course, a good rotary cutter. The spinning mat, as you're gonna see, will be invaluable. I'll be using the Cute Cuts, and these are from Lori Holt. I'll be fussy cutting some of the fabric. And if you're not familiar with fussy cutting, we'll be going over that. And then I also have a four and a half by eight and a half creative grid ruler that I'll be using as well to do get the fussy cutting going. So let's first thing is we're going to start off with the center of the block. And this is going to look a little bit odd to you maybe because we're used to having everything all squared up beautifully. But this is where we're going to keep going back to the pineapple trim tool and trimming up our shape. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to establish the center of the block. Now, as we did in our quilt, the top row is pink, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. We did those in the colors of the rainbow just because it's so beautiful, so striking. And I love bright color. I really do. I'm not, I'm not all about pink. I do like bright colors. Um, so first thing we're going to do, we'll be working on the orange block is we went ahead and picked out some fabric for the center of our block. Now, if you've ever used K facet fabrics before, they often have multiple colors in the very same fabric. The center of these blocks all came from this print. So as you can see, using the brown section or kind of almost this olive green isn't going to work for us. That's where the fussy cut rulers really come into play. So the first thing I'm gonna do when I establish my center is I might say, you know what? I really want this section of that fabric. Now you can absolutely draw around that. If you wanna go ahead and draw around that with your friction pen, take that away and rotary cut it. Or you can simply take the rotary cutter here, turn it. It can be a little bit awkward, especially if you're dragging some fabric along with you. Trim here and trim. You can see how having this clear ruler, now I can kind of trim up that one side as well. You can see having the clear ruler is really helpful because I can see all the way through it to see exactly which part of the fabric I want, that sweet spot that's gonna begin my block. So we have that ready to go. Now we've already done that ahead of time. Unlike other quilts that I've made where I am making sure that the piece that goes on the side is exactly the same size, two and a half, this isn't like that. You'll simply cut pieces of fabric that are at least this length, if not longer. And that's what we've done. We've simply sewn them on all four sides. I'm gonna start trimming this up with the tr pineapple trim tool, and then I will show you how to cut, how we're gonna cut the strips, and we would be adding onto this block. So let's just get, let's just jump into it. I think a picture's worth a thousand words. So the pineapple trim tool takes just a little bit to get used to the sight picture. The first thing I wanna point out to you is rounds two, four, six, and eight. These are these rounds that are, have the black, they're the squares or the dash line. There's a white line, it's almost easier if I show it to you on a black fabric here. And it says, use for rounds three, five, and seven. Keep in mind the center is not considered a round. That's just the center. So right now I have one round. So I'm gonna take this to my mat. And right there it says centering square round one. So I'm just going to put that white box around my center. And now you're gonna see why the spinning mat is so valuable. I will go ahead and cut and I'm not going to touch. I do not want to disturb my fabric. Instead, I'm gonna lift up my uh, trim tool and I will simply center the white lines around my block 
my block so far. So it doesn't look like much of a block, does it? And I'll keep trimming like this all the way around until I've trimmed all four sides. There are a lot of kind of leftover pieces from this process. So you want to have a, a trash, trash bag handy, trash can. So I'll center that up. All right. So the next step is just as you can see, I'm going to keep, keep you going. So this is my center and these are my sides. This is where I am so far. Here comes this layer. So now I need to go to my fabric and I need to cut a one and three quarter inch strip. And of course we, we are going for that orange, right? We know we're going to go for the orange. So why don't we go ahead? I want a really fussy cut in this lane right in here. So I'm just going to open that up because I want to save this. Maybe I'll do something else later on. And let's cut one and three quarters here like this. All right. Now, just like you've noticed, in fact, let me just show this to you so you see where we're going with it. I have the next layer sewn together. Do you see how I don't worry about it being this? I mean, we just kind of cut. So let, this is our shape. I know I need four sides that are at least that length. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to use my Kai scissors, which are so sharp. There's one side. I like that side. The main thing is that it's at least this length, if not a little bit longer. I like to go a little bit longer, of course, over here. And sure, we'll go. Maybe I like that. Maybe I like that part more. So let's do this. You get the idea. Don't stress over cutting this. It just needs to be the size, size that length or longer. And you'll simply sew that together with a quarter inch seam, pressing the seams away from the center. Let's go back now to our pineapple um, tool. And we're now on round two, one and two. Remember the center doesn't count. So let's take this here and we're gonna follow our instructions. This told us before that that was round one. So now we're going to come down to round two. We're just going to center that. Round two. Cut, rotate, cut. Lift and turn. And let me get that a little bit more toward the center. Double check that here and here. And now we're done with round two. So you get the idea. Now the next layer, let me just put this back in place. The next layer will be the black. So you go color, black, color, black. If, if that's your base color, I liked black because I felt it was very dramatic. Um, so now we come in just like before, we get strips of black, put them on there. And now this is round three, right? So we don't count the center one, two, three. This is where this line comes into play. Now, Tammy, who got this beautiful quilt design, helped me envision this ruler. She knows I'm a pilot. So she said, and I love, I love this visual. This is my, these are the sides of my runway and this is my center line. I can understand that. So, we are going to the white lines go bracket that center and that white line, that dash line is coming right across there. So you can see how I will go ahead now and I'm just going to keep rotating that until I have that same sight picture. almost had that wrong. So that dash line is here and that solid white line is running right across that, that corner right there. Rotate 90 degrees and we'll do it again. And 
do it again. Okay, so I have rows one, two, three. Now here comes four. Wow, we really have some exciting fabric coming in now. So I'm just gonna continue, that's round four. So I will now go to that place on my ruler, round four, lay this in here, and again, I'm gonna square up. Now we add another layer of black. Again, I want to keep you, no matter what layer we're on, one, two, three, four, five. This can be a little bit confusing, and this is why I wanted to point it out for you. Remember how I said this white line is for rounds three, five, and seven, and we're on that line. Do you remember before how I had my runway edge here, and this was the front, but now that we have these other rows, now we have to go up to that next layer. Now, we're not up here, of course. There's nothing to trim away because we were down here before. Now we just bump up to that next line. We're still on the other side of our center, but our new point that we're looking at is right here. Not here, there. Okay, we're on to the next stage. That was five, so now we're looking for round six. So I'm looking for six, and I see my six is right there. And just to remind you, anything that's the round two, four, six, that's all cutting down in this section. Don't cut up here. I've made that mistake making this block. And so let's line up around six, around the center. And again, that's going to be down here. Don't cut that. And we will flip that, rotate our mat. All right, so now we're off to round seven. We're back to three, five, and seven. So we'll go ahead, not here, but we have to bump up a row because each time we add a layer, we're now bumping up. Go ahead and cut there. We'll bump up to this line, centering our center block. As the block grows, it's, I can see it's becoming more important for me to kind of keep it centered on my mat because I'm literally running out of space. And then our final side. Okay. Round eight, our final round of this block. Let's go to that now. So let's look at where we are. Okay, this is where we were. Just as before, we added our color to those ends. Round eight, we're looking for round eight. So let's look at this here. Of course, we're not cutting any of that off. So these are our logical sides. Let's double check one more time. Mama always said, measure twice, cut one time. So I'll rotate that 180 degrees. Now, notice how 
These have been trimmed down, but these haven't. Even though this says for rounds three, five, and seven, they really, really meant, and also for the last round two, because I need to go up to this now and just put my white line there on all four sides and go ahead and trim. This does mention this in the booklet. So if you forget this step and you do have the booklet, you can just make sure you reference that. Round eight is different. Okay. Now also in the booklet, with the other strips before, we've just been kind of cutting one and three quarter by whatever length we want. Now we're gonna get very specific because now we need to put these corners on. And these pieces measure two by four, two and a half by four inches. Actually, yeah, two and a half by four inches. And those are just gonna be sewn here on your corners. So you're gonna look, it's gonna look like this. Of course, we need to square off our block at this point. So now we're gonna use this side of our uh, tool. And we're just checking all the way around this block to make sure that our spacing looks good. It looks like my block is slightly smaller than the footprint of the ruler. So I'm just gonna try to average that out and find a good spot to start trimming this block. I think I found a pretty good spot. Go ahead and flip. I wanted to mention that the fabrics you see in the quilt behind us will be in the kit that we have available at Shabby Fabrics. And of course, the K -fab facet fabrics are just so dynamic. Just look at this beautiful block and no two blocks will look alike. Anytime you're using the K facet fabrics, there are simply no way that two blocks will look identical. So I'd love to get a thumbs up if you enjoyed learning how to use the pineapple tool and we'll see you next time.